What is wrong with him? Oh, I'm gonna lose so much money on this game. Oh, this is just unbelievable. I can't believe it. Hey, Joan, what's going on, man? Oh, I'm watching this game and this ref. He doesn't know what he's doing. Oh, this is horrible. Well, the game is one thing, but uh, you don't look like you're doing so well. What's going on? Oh, I don't know. I think I'm just stressed out. I've got, got a lot of pain right up here in my chest. It's you almost like someone's sitting on my chest. Well, I tell you what, that's pretty classic signs and symptoms, along with you sweating so bad of a possible heart attack. Have you ever had a history of a heart attack or heart problems before? No, I've never had any problems like that before. Well, I'll tell you what, to be on the safe side, why don't we just call an ambulance and have them check you out? No, Just no. to make sure that it's not a heart attack. No, I don't need an ambulance. If I gotta go to the hospital, I'm just gonna drive if I have to. Well, listen, listen, here's, here's the deal. If it is possibly a heart attack, it is gonna be so important for you to be seen and get whatever it is that's causing it removed so that you don't have more serious problems. And you would never wanna drive yourself to the hospital because if you go unconscious while you're driving that vehicle, you not only run the risk of hurting yourself or killing yourself, but could you imagine running into another car that's filled with children and family members and wiping them out? I mean, that's just oh, too much. No, I understand. So I tell you what, why don't we just call 911 Let's get them on the way. If it's nothing, they'll be able to let us know that. But if it is something serious, then we're going to be able to get you in for treatment. All right. Let's all give right. them a call, all right? Yeah, 911. Listen, you know what? There's a lot of research that shows that heart attack patients, if they can take aspirin, has your doctor ever said anything about not taking aspirin or that you cannot take aspirin? No, I've never had a problem with it before. Any allergies to medications that you know of? No. Any bleeding problems that would stop you from being able to take aspirin? No, nothing like that. Okay, well here's a couple baby aspirin. You can take between two and four of those. Just pop them in, chew it up, and swallow it. And that's gonna help reduce the risk of further blood clot formation. It's not guaranteed, but it has been shown to be very helpful. So just swallow that down. And just get into a nice position of comfort. If anything's tight or constricting, feel free to loosen that up and just kind of try to relax, okay, buddy? So let's take a closer look at heart attacks. First of all, what are they and why do they happen? Secondly, is there anything we can control or are we out of control when it comes to heart attacks? Thirdly, let's review the signs and symptoms so that we know that they may be having a heart attack and that it's important to call 911 or activate emergency medical services. Well, first of all, What's a heart attack? Well, a heart attack is anything that actually occludes a vessel that feeds the heart. And when that heart muscle begins to starve of oxygen, it causes pain. And that pain is usually what they feel when they say, yeah, it felt like an elephant was sitting on my chest, or it's the squeezing feeling. And sometimes it may even radiate to one or both arms. It can also potentially radiate up into the neck and in some cases, they've even said it feels like jaw pain or a toothache. In women, it's very characteristic for it to actually go to the back and it makes them feel like they might have pulled a muscle or have muscle strain. And in many cases, they might put it off because it's not that classic drenched in sweat, diaphoresis, diaphoresis being the technical term for heavy sweating. Um, they might just feel like they're achy or that they've got indigestion. And so they can sometimes put it off for too long and then suffer other consequences as a result. But in the case where it's classic signs and symptoms, the heavy sweating, this crushing chest pain, radiating to one or both arms, up into the neck or jaw, shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, weakness, nausea, these are all classic signs and symptoms of a heart attack. Now, that isn't to say that other things can sometimes mimic that. Uh, they could be that they have angina that comes and goes, and so it feels like that for a little bit, but then it goes away. It's still kind of like thunder on the horizon, and they should take note of that and maybe rule out the, the chance that it is an active heart attack. But it can also be things like pneumonia or pleuritis or even a broken rib. But in the end, it's better to rule out the heart attack and make sure it's not something that's life-threatening. So if in doubt, call 911 and make sure that it's not a heart attack. So what are some of the risk factors? What do we eat? How much do we exercise? Are we smoking cigarettes or other things that are bad for us? If we have diabetes and we can control it, are we controlling it or is it out of control? Those would be classified as the controllable risk factors. 
Uncontrollable is more things like genetic predisposition, like I have this incredibly high cholesterol level and I'm a vegetarian. Well, that can happen. Things like diabetes that just won't stay in control no matter how much we treat it. Things like race. Things like being male. So these are all the things that we have by research found to predispose certain people to cardiovascular disease and there's not much they can do to change that. Not to say that there isn't other things they can do to help prevent heart disease. Now let's talk about the signs and symptoms. When they have those signs and symptoms like profuse sweating, chest pain, arm pain, neck pain, jaw pain, dizziness, shortness of breath, nausea, weakness, these are all classic signs and symptoms that the person might be having a heart attack. And if they display those signs and symptoms, our job is pretty clear. Call 911 immediately. Get the ambulance on the way. If it's not a heart attack, it's okay. We can always disregard the ambulance or they can rule that out then. But if it is a heart attack, time is of the essence and we don't want to slow any of that treatment down. Their life could depend on it. Remember that most people will want to deny that it's really a heart attack. They'll also probably want to drive themselves into the hospital. Both are extremely dangerous, not only for themselves, but for anybody who becomes a victim of a person who's unconscious behind a wheel careening into that vehicle and hurting other people. So remember, if you're waiting for the ambulance and they can take aspirin, it's one of the first treatments that even the paramedics would do. Because aspirin, when it's absorbed into the bloodstream, works like a platelet lubricant. It actually helps blood platelets slide by each other so that they don't stick and make a bigger clot. So it's actually one thing that you can do if the patient allows you to give it to them where they can take aspirin and help themselves prevent a worse heart attack or actually relieve some of the symptoms. If they have, say, nitroglycerin tabs or a spray and they can't get up to get it, you can assist them by going to get it and giving it to them. Remember to keep the patient as calm as possible. You can't lie to them and tell them everything's going to be okay because we don't know if that's true. But we could reassure them that they're going to be in good hands and that you're not going to leave them alone. If they have tight garments, we can loosen those up and then allow the patient to be in the best position of comfort they can find while we wait for EMS to arrive. 